To our first um, suffrage centennial woman's craft. Today we are going to show you how to make our suffrage pins, the um, corsage looking ones. These one right here I'm wearing. Um, you can always place a hold. We have little kits. Everything's ready to go in this little bag for you. All the pieces. You would place a hold on it and then you could pick it up at the library for you and then you can watch this video and see how it's done. So the little bags come with all the pieces. We have the base that the passage goes on. There are eight pieces of the purple ribbon. There'll be four of the white and then four of the gold. I've already put some together, so we'll see how that goes. But when you do this, you're going to need a hot glue gun. So everybody be really careful with this. If you're not a pro at glue gunning, you may want to practice before you do this. Um, have a paper towel underneath it or a paper plate that way you can catch the extra drips that you'll have on that. So what you first want to do is do your white ribbons. So you're going to, and I'm just going to demonstrate with the purple because I did all the white. You're going to take all your ribbons, you're going to fold them in half like this and try to have the pieces meet up as much as you can. Hold it with your index finger like this with your glue gun. You're gonna put it towards the edge of the bottom piece. Give a little bit of, it's gonna burn a little bit. Try to get that off. Now this is where you gotta be really careful because those of you who work with glue guns know that it can be really hot. So you wanna squeeze your edges together. And this is where the paper plate comes in handy because you wanna make sure you squeeze it so you might have an extra piece of glue sticking out. You wanna wipe it off on the edge so it gets it. Make sure it's squeezed, and then you just put it down to dry, okay? Do a couple more so you can see them. So you're gonna do these for all your pieces of ribbon. Again, you're gonna squeeze it so it's already curled. Put your glue on. Squeeze it together. Use that plate to dab the excess, and then let it dry. So you want to do all your ribbons just like that. As you can see, I have them all done. Everything ready to go. So with your white ones, you see in our path when we give you, there's a circle in the middle. You're going to put the white ones like a compass, north, east, south, and west. You want to start them towards the top. So you want to put a dab of the hot glue on at your north. I'm going to have it up there and squeeze it down. And again, it lines up with the middle ring. So that's how you want to judge where that's going to start. Now if you want to wait in between each layer to let them cool, you can do that. For our purposes today, I'm just going to keep going with all our pieces once I get them down. Um, when I did this for our original ones, I just let everything cool and then I would could proceed doing it from there. So there you have your white ones down. Okay. So your next ones you're going to do are your gold pieces. There's four of those. Now the four pieces go in between your whites. So again, you're going to line up the bottom, pull it down, and you want to try to get it to go into the middle as much as you can. You want to purpose this, you want to try to cover up much of the cardboard underneath and in the middle. So it's starting to come together. It's okay if there's gaps in between the white and the, and the white and the gold. That's where our um, purple's gonna come in because there's eight purples and those will cover in the gaps of what is in between. Okay. So there's the base of it. 
your whites and your golds, okay? So with all your purples, there are eight of those. You're now gonna fill in the gaps. You can drop these down a little bit on the piece so it covers in more of the center. And it glues them down yet, but if you wanna move it inward more, that way you're covering up more and it gives more definition to the three colors, you can do that, or you can have them all the same height. It's whatever your preference is on how you want it to look. I put some of it over the other two pieces, the glue. I put some of it over the white and the gold. And I move the purple down just a smidgen below where the rest of them are. So it kind of falls below. And we're gonna do that all the way around. And they're gonna end up overlapping each other too. And that's okay because we're eventually gonna have that the woman's vote pin right in the middle, that piece of cardboard that we had provided for you too. Again, be really careful with that hot glue. If you want to use a toothpick or um, a lollipop stick or anything like that, if you think it'll to help push it down, that way you don't get your burns on your fingers, that would probably be best too. If you want the littles to help you, you can have them help with that too. They can push down the pieces. Or if you have really good nails, that's always good too, where I don't have any, so it doesn't help. And it's okay that the glue's gonna show when it needs, because it will start to leak out when you push it out, it's okay. This one's being a little off and that's okay. Because that shows that it's homemade, it's not done in a factory, it's all imperfect. And our last one. So at this point, I would let this sit and rest. If you want to push down the glue to make sure it's really stable and everything's right there in the middle. Um, when everything's cool, then you can start getting your little pieces of um, glue that's falling around everywhere. So once that's set, or setting, we provide you with a little circle in the middle. It's just a piece of cardboard that's been laminated. You're gonna need your scissors. We left it on the cardboard, that way if you need to make it smaller, you can do it. Uh, we try to cut it as perfectly as we can, but if you need to make it a little bit smaller to fit in between your ribbon pieces, um, you can do that on your own. Use your judgment on that. So we do that. So I want to see how I like it. If I like it to look like that, if I want to cut it a little bit more, however you want to However you want to have that, if I want it smaller, I might do it a little bit smaller. But if you like the size of it, you can leave it. If you feel that this is gonna come apart, the um, the clearness that we have, the clear cover on top, the lamination, you can use a piece of just regular house tape to make it stay. So, so then you're gonna take your glue gun again. Hopefully this is all dry and you're gonna pick a big dab right in the middle. Now, decide which way you wanna have this. If you wanna have it so it's mostly hanging down, you get all free colors like that. If you want it in the middle, because that's how you're gonna have your ribbon go. Everybody's different. And you're just gonna push that on. Like that. And it's gonna go like that and you're good. And then you're gonna let this set for a little bit. And while you're doing, if you wanna push in the ribbons to make them puffy, you can do that too. We provided in the baggie a little pin on the back. So once that's set on the back, you're just gonna huckle your pin right on the very top. Let that set, and then you're all set. And there's your suffrage woman's rosette.
suffrage pop-up um, card. This is a rose card, and what it showed was it was a symbol for women's suffrage that you were in favor of women's suffrage. So if you take a look, it pops up. There's the yellow rose, and there's some leaves on here. So this is what we're going to make um, right now. So I'm just going to stick it over there. So you're going to receive a kit, and inside the kit you'll have all your pieces. You'll have your leaves, you'll have your petals, and you'll have your fold-up card. So with the fold-up card, basically just a one piece of construction paper folded in half. Okay, so you fold it in half and you set it aside. And then you have your pieces for your rows. Now with your pieces with your rows, if you look at it, they're numbered. There's number four, it's the real small one, that's gonna be the center of your rows. And there's two of those. There's number three, there's number two, and then there's number one, okay? So we're gonna start with number one. And I actually started one just for time's sake. So what happens is you get your card, you fold it in half, and you're gonna glue number one to the center of your card. So number one is already, already pasted in place. But I'm just going to show you real quick on how to put it in place. So you're going to take, from your kit, you're going to take the number one. That's the beginner. So you don't need this. This is just your stencil. So here we are. So we got the one. So we're going to fold it in half. I'm going to put this aside. You're going to fold this in half. Okay. And then you're going to fold your tab. This is a tab in the middle. You're just going to fold that down. Okay both ways. I'm going to fold my, my flower petals so it looks like a heart. Okay? And there's a little tab here on the side that you're going to fold down. So everything's folded. You open it up. This is your flower. This is the tab. So the tab you're going to glue to the back of the other petal. So there's two petals so you're going to glue that down. So you can use regular white glue, or you can actually use the uh, glue stick. It's up to you what you prefer. So I'm going to glue these together. Okay, so now I have it glued together. So we glued the tab to the back of the other petal. Okay, so now it's starting to look more like a flower. To make the flower have a petal appearance, I use the pencil, you can use um, the back of the scissors, the, uh, the point, and you can roll these. But you can roll it at any time, and this will give you your flower appearance. So you just kind of roll it at the end of each petal. But for sake of time, I'm just going to keep going. So we got it folded. We're going to place it in the middle. So you want to place your flower at the crease, so where it creases. And you're going to glue these two tabs that were in the middle, that's where you're gonna put the glue. You're gonna put the glue on the back of it. So let me put glue on here and just on here. And this is what's gonna hold it. So you're gonna come back to your, your folded card. You're gonna place it in the middle. You decide if you want it in the top, the bottom, the middle. And you're gonna place it so that your folds match up to the fold of your card. So I'm going to tilt it a little so you can see. Match it. Fold it down. You don't want to put too much glue, otherwise you'll end up closing your card permanently. <laughs> you want it to pop up. Okay, so it's going to look like this. And if you look, you should see an arrow. Okay? Can you picture the arrow? That's in the middle. So I'm going to take my other card that's been sitting for a few more longer minutes, and I'm going to start with number two. So the stencil for two, you put it place aside. Um, so before you start, you're going to take your, your, your end flower and you're going to fold it in half, because that's where your card is going to meet. That's your fold of your card. So that's one half. You're also going to fold over the other. Okay, so now we have it folded. 
So you have a fold here, and then you're gonna fold over the other half. And that will complete the next center of your card. So after you do your fold, you're gonna end up gluing them together. You're gonna use that tab, and you're gonna, tab, you're gonna glue it to the back. Okay, and you see there's another arrow again in the middle. So I'm gonna put the glue on. I'm gonna bring around my flower. I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna hold it down so it sets. I have an arrow again in the middle. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna bring it back to my card. My card has the fold right down the middle. You're gonna place this in the middle of your fold. So your petal that's folded is going to be matching up with your the center of your card, okay? So you're gonna put glue on these little arrow tabs. Try just to keep it on the tabs because you want your card to pop up. You're gonna place your centers in the middle. They should start to meet now. You hold that down so it gets dry. Okay, if you folded it right, you open it up. See, I didn't let it sit, but it's gonna sit for maybe a couple of seconds longer than I just did. So then we would move on to petal number three. So we're almost done, we're halfway there. Petal three, it's the same idea, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to be able to go in the middle. You're gonna, there's tabs, there's one, two, three. This end tab, of course, is gonna match up to the other end tab to make your inside. So let's fold these over so you can see them. This is the back one, and that's going to match up to the back. It gets a little trickier now, so. We're gonna match it up like that. Okay, so first I'm gonna put some glue on this tab. goes on the inside tab. So I'm gonna match it up to make it match. I'm gonna to have to hold it. I don't know if you can see it. Oh. I'm gonna hold that for a few minutes. Eh, maybe not a few minutes, maybe a minute, okay? Let that get firm so it stays. You still have a little bit of an arrow on the inside. It's hard to see, but there still, <laughs> still is an arrow. And once that gets firm and it won't pull apart, you're gonna wanna fold your flowers, okay? So we folded it in the middle here. You're gonna fold, and then you're gonna fold the opposite side. You're gonna take one of the petal on the opposite side and fold that in half because that's gonna be where your card's gonna fold when you close your card. So now I have these tiny little tabs. I'm gonna put glue on those. Everything's getting smaller. And I'm gonna center it. So as long as I center my tabs, I should be okay. So I might need to put more glue in there. So maybe liquid glue might be easier because you can really direct it in one spot. The, this is a little trickier. I'm gonna take this down, line it up. I'm gonna use my pencil, push it down. Try and line this end up. Push it down, give it a few more minutes. So it's starting to look more and more like a flower. So get a 
hold that down a little bit more. Okay, so that will, that's how you do the each petal. Now with the last one, I'm gonna just do this quick. It's number four, you fold it in half. Now this has really, this is the, the part you're gonna glue down. You fold this in here, okay? And this has a fold. This is a little trickier to see. You're gonna put glue in the middle on this bottom. Okay, it's folded. And then you're gonna stick this in the bottom. Oh, gosh. Fold it back. It's a little tricky. Push this down, line it up with the center of your flower. You can actually at this point probably close your flower and hold it for a few minutes just to get it to stay. Okay, I didn't let that one stay long enough. Um, and you do the same thing with the, the second number four. You're gonna place that on the inside you're gonna use the, if you can see that. We're gonna fold this in half. You can use the stencil actually to see where the tabs are. There's one there, there's one there. If you can see that. almost like a butterfly. So what you're gonna do, put the glue on the end where you folded the tab. This is where you need a little more patience. This goes right in the middle. Hold that down. You're gonna place that right in the middle. Use your trusty pencil, push that down. And you're going to have to fold it. You have to play with it a little bit to get it exact. Just a little bit of patience. And you just hold that down until your glue sets. Okay. So once you've got your flower in place, it's going to look like this. I'm going to just put that to the side. Okay. So there's your flowers. All this has been glued down. I took a little bit more patience with it than that one. Um, now the leaves, you'll get two leaves with your kit. They're just simple leaves that you can put down. You can glue them down, you can tape them down, you can put them wherever you want on your card. Um, if you want your petals to look more like petals, you can go back. You can fold them down a little bit more. Just roll them over your pencil. Just hold that down. And just go over each petal. So that's how you make the rose card. <laughs> it does take a little bit of patience, uh, a little bit more um, holding it down than I did in the demonstration. But I hope you enjoy it and let us know how, how you did.
In ancient Greece, people used to cast their votes by placing a simple rock in a jar that was marked with their favorite candidate's name. In this country, we've never used rocks, but we've used just about everything else. The vaults are open. And sometimes it's gotten us into trouble. It's fascinating to see how voter technology can be so influential in determining who gets elected. Congratulations. 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 In early America, a voter would cast their vote aloud. You showed up at the polling place and you would announce yourself under oath that you were a valid voter. You would then call out the name of your preferred candidate and that name would then be recorded in the voting roll. A boss, for example, could order his employees to vote for a particular candidate or they'd lose their jobs. Oftentimes, politicians would buy barrels of whiskey, which they would then serve to whoever voted for them. A number of voters became so drunk that they couldn't even walk over to the voting booth. They had to be literally carried. By the 1830s, things had gotten so bad that reformers were demanding change. In the mid-19th century, the states came up with a new innovation in voting technology, the secret ballot. In this case, a voter would write his candidate's name on a piece of paper and place it in the ballot box. In the late 19th century, an innovation was introduced into the American voting system known as the Australian ballot. These would be ballots that would be printed by the state and would have both party candidates on them. There would also be boxes next to the names of the candidates. But the secret ballot presented its own set of problems. Now ballot boxes could be stuffed. Now, as the population of the United States grew, it became very difficult to actually count all these written ballots. And so in order to make the voting process and the vote counting more efficient, an innovation was created known as the lever machine. A voter would walk into this booth and pull down levers next to the name of the candidate that they preferred. Those levers would then record in this machine a vote count, one candidate in favor of another. In the 1960s, Americans were introduced to punch card voting, in which they would go into a booth and punch out a hole next to the name of the candidate they favored. Okay, did you vote? Yes. But we all know how that worked out. We voted, and now the system is trying to figure out exactly what we said. You voted, you lost. Give it up. Some people say the future of voting technology is this, a cell phone. Americans conducted an entire election on a cell phone in which 609 million votes were cast. That's 487 million more votes than were cast in the 2004 presidential election. This election, however, was for American Idol.